Besides drug and arms trafficking, child porn is sadly among the most popular content on the darknet. Just recently, in June, German authorities busted a network of pedophiles that distributed abusive material online. It's the third big case in the last 18 months. Investigators found 500 terabytes of material showing the rape and torture of children. One, two, three, four. Especially now, during the corona pandemic, the demand for online child porn seems to be surging. A report by Europol shows that the distribution of sexual child abuse material in the EU increased by 106% in March, when most countries had a lockdown in place. The darknet plays a major role in selling and sharing the illegal material. Even though investigators do sometimes catch pedophiles, it is very hard. What exactly do pedophiles do on the darknet? Why is the darknet the perfect hiding place for pedophiles? And why is it so hard to catch them? Let's take a closer look. The answer to this seems obvious. Pedophiles share and consume all kinds of content, like images and videos showing the sexual abuse and torture of children. But it doesn't stop there. Besides using websites for the content they offer, pedophiles also engage with each other through encrypted chats. They are a kind of community, if you will. German investigators who read through the chat messengers of the current case in Munster said that the darknet plays down child rape and torture. By finding like-minded people, pedophiles might feel more comfortable and more normal. They even give each other advice on how to best get in contact with a child if you don't have access to one in your family or field of work. There's apparently a whole manual detailing how to get children to like you, how to sedate and then how to best rape them without leaving any visible marks. In Münster, the main suspect, a 27-year-old IT expert, raped his 10-year-old stepson and offered him to other men in different parts of Germany. They communicated on darknet forums. On top of that, the man installed cameras in the garden shed owned by his mother to film the horrific actions. He offered the videos on the darknet. For pedophiles, the darknet is not just a huge library of illegal content, it's also a communication tool to talk to other predators and, for example, meet up for rapes. It is also believed that many of those who would usually only watch the content are more likely to act on their urges and become predators. Imagine this. You have a secret object, something you are trying to hide. You walk into a huge forest and find a little spot next to a tree. You dig, put that little object in, cover it up so no one can see it. And now imagine that forest having hundreds of thousands of trees. Where would someone look to find that object, not even knowing there is something hidden? Exactly. That's the darknet at least according to Daniel Prince, an expert in security and protection science at Lancaster University. In order to find something on the darknet, you need to be told where to look. A simple Google search isn't possible here. So, for pedophiles, it's the perfect place to share all kinds of content. For everyone consuming child pornography, it's a safe haven, because it's very hard to track them down. Even though it's illegal, sexual child abuse content can also be found on the normal internet. But the darknet, because of its encrypted connection, allows pedophiles to act anonymously. Most people use Tor, which stands for The Onion Router, a worldwide network of servers that can hide a user's identity and location, so it's easier to engage in criminal activities without being detected. Plus, there's a whole lot more data available on the darknet. I already told you that in the most recent case in the German city of Munster, they found 500 terabytes. To make that number a bit more understandable, that equals at least 300,000 hours worth of video material. One year has 8,760 hours, so that's over 34 years. For those who run child porn websites, the darknet is also a lucrative market. Some sites like Welcome to Video, a website that was run from South Korea and shut down in 2018, take membership fees that can be paid using bitcoins. On top of that, users could pay for VIP accounts. The case in Munster is a good example to show how pedophiles sometimes get caught on the darknet. They basically have to make a mistake by not covering their tracks carefully enough. So, in 2018, German investigators found out about someone distributing child porn on the darknet. Because of a mistake made by the main suspect, Adrian V, they find an IP address leading to an agricultural enterprise. Adrian V had worked there as an IT expert. They get a search warrant and, among other things, seize his laptop. 
the main piece of evidence. But because the IT expert knows how to properly protect his data, it takes the police over a year to even get into his computer. Only then they have enough evidence to arrest him. So far, 11 suspects have been detained and three victims identified, but investigators call this the tip of the iceberg. In other cases, it's the other way around. Police investigators search a place after a victim has reported the abuse and find out the offenders also distributed material on the darknet. But children often keep quiet, especially when being abused by a family member. The three cases that we've seen in Germany in the last 18 months sparked an old debate again. Do we need data retention in Germany and even in all of Europe? Studies say that 90% of all darknet websites containing videos and images of child porn use European servers. One of the reasons behind this are EU laws protecting citizens' privacy. Fearing a general surveillance by the government, many Europeans value their privacy very highly. Internet operators are therefore only allowed to store IP addresses for a short amount of time. Not enough time for investigators to catch a criminal on the darknet. A general data retention is not compatible with EU law. However, many politicians and child protection services call for a change and say we can't prioritize data privacy if that means children will suffer. The solution could be data retention in case of suspected illegal activities. In the US and in Canada, all internet companies have to report sexual child abuse content immediately. They have to hand over IP addresses so offenders can be tracked. And interesting enough, German investigators often catch pedophiles because they get a tip from US authorities. So, changing the EU's data privacy laws just enough to be able to track down criminals on the darknet would help the police and their cybercrime units a lot. Here's another challenge investigators face. Most of the time the forums where pedophiles meet require fresh material in order to be accepted into the community. So only by posting new videos or images of sexually abused children you will be let in. Of course, investigators can't do that because they would commit a crime by doing so. An idea that's been discussed is computer-generated child porn. Deepfakes can be very convincing and seem like authentic footage, but they're just generated images, so no child would get hurt, of course. But this approach is still highly controversial. What do you think about this idea? And do you think the police should have access to everyone's private data, like IP addresses, if that would mean they catch more pedophiles, of course? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all things digital. Bye.